Today, I'm going to show you how to create a high-end Zoa garden. What's up, reefers? My name's Tris, and you're watching the Nano Tank Reefer YouTube channel. Today's video is actually inspired by a really good friend of mine. He goes by the name of Ian's Reef on Instagram. He's currently got a Red Sea Reef 170. He's started up a new tank, but he's currently got a Red Sea Reef 170. He's really well known for that tank. And more importantly, what is at the top of that tank? He has got one of the nicest Zoa gardens that I've ever had the pleasure of seeing in person. If you haven't checked out his Instagram, I'll pop a link in the description for you so you can go check that out. For those of you that don't know the plans for the Nouveau 20, it's going to be a Zoa dominated tank with a few LPS corals scattered around. I put a few LPS corals, ACANs, in the tank last week. I put a rock flower anemone. If you haven't seen that, I'll pop a link up here somewhere. Uh, so today we're going to focus on the Zoa garden. Let's go. So, the zoas that I'm going to put in this tank, I've already uh, dripped and dipped and I've put them on the sand bed ready, waiting to go in this tank. We are going to focus on this area here today. Um, we might dot a few more around uh, thereabouts, but we're really going to focus on this, this area here. We're getting this area covered. Uh, there's a few preparations that you need to do with these because uh, some of them, you can see them in there, but there are massive plugs and they've only taken up a little part of the space. So. First off, what we're going to do is we're going to snip the bottom of these plugs off and we're going to snip around the edge and uh, get as much of the plug uh, off that we possibly can. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, I mean you can see here, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see, but you've got a big plug here and you've got two small zoas in the middle of it. So what I'm going to do is try and remove as much of the plug as I possibly can, as I don't really want that sat on the rock um, with all that empty space around it. So. I've got some snips. I think these are tile nippers. Uh, this is what I use. They don't close all the way, but you don't need to close them all the way. So, in brief, what I'll show you I'll do is just grab. You should really be wearing gloves when you're doing this. I apologize, the light's not that great. But grab your plug with the, the snips and then just nip away at what you don't want. It would also be advisable to wear goggles because if the Zoa squirts at you, you don't want it going in your eyes. So I'll just keep nipping around the edge of this plug. I won't get too close to the Zoa itself, but as you can see, gone from a big round plug to just as much as we need. I mean, I could take a little bit more off this, but I'll leave it as it is. Um, and I'll pop that back in the tank and I'm going, I'm going to go and grab a, a standard Zoa plug. So anyone that buys Zoas may well be familiar with a standard frag plug. This is how mine come normally. I've actually fragged these out of the, uh, the 250. Um, that's why it's pretty fresh. Um, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to remove this portion of the frag plug. Uh, you can do it with either a Dremel, you can do it with a coral saw if you've got one, but I again use the nippers. So don't do this anywhere near the tank because sometimes this end flies off and if it hits your tank you are pretty buggered. But literally give it a little squeeze and the bottom of the plug will fall off. So now that I've nipped off the bottom of all of the plugs that I wanted uh, nipping off, uh, except for these rasters here, I do need to do that, actually I forgot about them. Uh, we're gonna start concentrating on uh, where to start placing these corals. So, currently got a lot of um, orange and red. So we wanna start mixing up the colors a little bit more. We wanna go for a bit of yellow in there, uh, some greens maybe. Um, so yeah, this is now basically how I place my zoas based on colours. So I've got, I'll, when I'm putting these on there, they're going to be pretty closed up, uh, so you won't be able to see them. But what I'm going to do is I'll put some pictures up of the zoas that I'm putting in place so you'll be able to see um, the contrast of, of them. Right, so here we've got orange, um, so I'm going to go for maybe something either yellow or yellow and green. I've got some Yodas over here. I think there are three polyps of Yodas. This clownfish is going to bite me again. I know it is. I had my hand in here a second ago and it bit me. Right, so we'll put some Yodas probably about here. 
Uh, what you want to do, when you're placing them, you want to make sure there's enough room around for the zoa to fill out. I mean, this is only a small plug at the minute, but these are going to grow. Uh, so you want to make sure there's enough room around the plug itself for the, uh, for the zoas to grow. So, we'll grab these out, get bit by the clown again. We'll dub some glue on the bottom. Pop, pop it back down here. If anyone knows a way to stop clownfish biting you when you put your hand in the tank, I could do with some recommendations. This, this clown, honestly, look at it. I know it's defended its territory, but give me a break. Right, so Yodas are in. Let's move on to something else. I think we'll have a load of pink zippers there. I think that looks quite nice. Pink zippers are obviously pink, and they've got a nice uh, green center to them. Pop them just down there. Okay, now I want some, some yellow. Get away. Just here. Uh, so they are scrambled eggs. They're actually a classic. They're really, really cheap zoas, but actually one of my favourite zoas, to be fair. Um, and they look really nice when grown out there. So we've got the orange with the, the acan. We've got um, the yodas with the nice yellow skirt. We've got some pink zippers up here, and we've got some nice yellow scrambled eggs there. They look all right. These are prismatic rainbows. I'm trying to avoid this clown, I'm also trying to avoid the Echinata. So, prismatic rainbows, I think we're going to have here, just above the Echinata. Right, there we go. So, that's what we've got so far. And don't forget, these will fill out. You're looking at it now and you're thinking, wow, there's a lot of space that you've not used there, but these will fill out. Uh, so, don't put them too close together. Right, what else can we put on here? Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these. These are tiny and they're not looking that great. They, would you believe it, they're actually um, psychosis zoas. One of the sort of higher end zoas that I've got. I think I paid about 100 and, 150 pounds for a single polyp and they were doing great in my tank until maybe four or five months ago. Uh, so I'm hoping now I've put them in this little tank here that they'll do a little bit better. That's this little area done. We'll now move on to sort of this area here. So if I put that orange oxide, and if I put them right down here, I will glue them into some sort of place. Let me move this camera actually, because it's not really focused very well. Just hold it on for a second, and let go, and it should hold. All right, so there's more orange. Um, what can we go for next? We'll go for like a, a mega rainbow, I think. I think we're gonna have them right on the top of this rock, maybe here, dab it on. Try not to squeeze the zoas when you do this. Try and grab it from sort of the base of the plug. We've got room, this is like, a, this here, prismatic rainbow is kind of a rainbow zoa, and this one's a rainbow zoa as well. So I'm gonna put something in the middle uh, to sort of contrast them. Go for a red, red zoa. Nightcrawlers, but they're a nice red zoa. I think they've got a blue mouth. I think they'll go nice in the middle right in the center of the two. Right, we've got some fake chilies, fake lime chilies. Let me get them in, focus. I think they'll go nice just in between this acan at the front here and the rock flower, right here. And I know that you can see the frag plugs and they look a bit messy, but these will grow out. Just be aware that they'll grow out and you won't see any of this nastiness at the minute they will cover the whole whole of the rock there it may take a month may take two months but just know that it will eventually fill out right now we'll focus on this little area here we have what have we got here then so we've got the wilsoni symphonia wilsoni here we've got the orange oxide zoas here we've got the mega rainbow zoas here and we've got the acan that you can see up there so i'm going to go for some green, actually one of my favorites. They're called Sour Punch. Bear in mind, some of the names that I say, if you're watching in sort of like the States, they will be different names. I know you guys name a lot of your zoas differently to us. So these are the UK names. So we'll grab them. There we go. Right, there we are. 
So that is the sour punch. Tutti Frutti's uh, yellow. I'm going to pop them down here. As far down as I can go. What have we got? Orange, yellow, green, rainbow, and then something in the middle. I think we'll go for some more pink zippers. Hold them down for a second. Trying to put any pressure on the actual zower itself, if you can find like a little area of the plug where there's no zowers on there. You can push from there. We'll go for some BBEB. -E that'll look quite nice just behind the sour punch. Right, yeah, I'll pop them in there. That's the BBEB. -E and then we'll get something in this area here. There we go. We've still got a couple of frags that we haven't put on the rocks. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait a few hours. I'm going to leave the rest of them on the sand bed. I'll come back. We'll see how the colours are mixing, how the zoas are looking more to the point. Let me put the wave makers back on. And right, let's move this back around here. So, as you can see, it looks a bit messy. Um, there's gaps. You can see frag plugs. You can see glue. But do not worry, these will grow out. Don't forget, they will grow out. Eventually, in a month or two, you will never see the plug. It, all of these gaps here will be filled in with beautiful zoas. Um, so I'll cut back to, um, to maybe in a few hours and see how they currently look. So it's actually been about a week since I've added these. So I added them last Saturday and it's now Saturday again. Um, they're starting to look a bit better. They don't look at their peak. Uh, but they're starting to, uh, to look a lot better than they did. Um, so yeah, I added a little torch to this tank, uh, mainly because I fragged up uh, the big torch that I had in the, um, the 250. And this little tiny head came off it, and I didn't want to put it in such strong flow that I've got in the, uh, the 250 there. And I can't sell it because it's so small, because uh, I'm not going to rip anybody off with, uh, with tiny heads of torches. So I thought, you know what, it's a nano tank, so we'll put a little nano torch in here. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, it's in there. Uh, so yeah, the zoas are looking a bit better than they did. They've still got a long way to go. A, uh, a simple zoa garden. We've obviously only concentrated on the front of the tank. Um, I've got plans for the rest of the tank, um, but you will see them as the tank progresses. So that will pretty much do it for this week's episode on the little nano tank. Next week, I think I'm gonna do a little maintenance video on this tank so you can see how I, uh, I maintain it. I've done one on the 250, um, so I thought I might as well show you how I maintain this little tank. And God, it's a lot easier to maintain than a bigger tank. I'll, uh, I'll just say that. So yeah, make sure you're tuned in, make sure you're uh, subscribed to the channel, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you next week.